Hi everyone, David DeHaas here with Ms. Chandra Lightfuss of Living Waters Wellness Center here in Boise, Idaho. And today's edition of our little YouTube video is going to be about ear candling. I first discovered ear candling when my uh, middle daughter was one year old. She had numerous ear infections and my other daughter had a few as well, but it was getting to be kind of a pain because this caused us to actually to miss our Christmas vacation. So going back about 25 years ago, this time I got fed up and I heard about this thing called ear candling. I said, that's it. We're not going to the doctor again. It doesn't work. She continues to get reinfected. I'm done with this. So I went down to my local health food store and I says, tell me about these ear candles. And interesting at that time, the guy thought I was from Hewlett Packard because a lot of people have been coming up from Hewlett Packard to get ear candles. So it's kind of buzz back then some 25 years ago. But I was, anyway, I was just learning about it, had no idea what I was doing, and then I had to talk a little one-year-old baby to do an ear candle, which is very interesting. But we got to do it, and then for years after that, when the kids had uh, an ear infection or had their ears were hurting, they would actually come and they'd go, they'd come walking up to me, Daddy, I need an ear candle. So it's very effective, it's very easy to do. We're going to talk about it here in a moment, what it's actually doing for you but it's the quickest, easiest way to get rid of this, basically this blockage in your station tube uh, and get that mucus out of there. Now, if you have a healthy colon, you're probably not gonna need an ear candle because 80% of your immune system is in the gut and if you have a healthy colon, you're not gonna have an issue. But things happen from time to time, we get little imbalances, so that's what we have ear candles for. So Miss Chandra is going to actually do and show you how to do an ear candle on me. So Chandra, tell me a little bit about now this is a pretty big tube. I know there's two different sizes, so when you're in your local area, you may go to a health food store and you might find one that's very, about the size of a pencil. And so we're gonna talk about the differences as well as we go along. So Chandra, tell us a little bit about your knowledge of what we're doing here. Okay, what I learned with doing the, the first time I actually had an ear candling and I experienced it was because my chiropractor uh, through an office scope discovered that I had a bug in my ear and said that his wife does ear candling. So I had no idea what that was. I was open to it. And so she had some very large, like this, uh, ear candles. Um, they're uh, beeswax and herbs blended into the cotton gauze that it's wrapped in. But the important thing with these is, and the size matters, because you want to, when you put the candle into the ear, you want to get a seal. Because once you have the seal, the smoke is going to travel down and create a vacuum. And that vacuum helps pull out any impurities, earwax, or bugs that might be in the ear canal. So that's why it's important to get these, or to find these larger size ear candles. And we have them here at Living Waters. Um, and then the service itself, if you're going to do it at home, um, you would need to protect the head with a paper plate and the ear candle would go in thus way. But okay. if you come to Living Waters and have uh, David or I do it, um, then there's a whole procedure that goes with it. It's about a one hour procedure and it's you get more than just the ear candling. So it's really, wanna, really nice. You're going to see here in just a moment how great it is. Are you ready to lay down? I am ready to lay down. Okay. So lay on your back first and remove your glasses. Oh, wow. Okay. Get her. Chop, chop. <laughs> Take charge. Okay. So I put um, some gloves on because there can be a lot of bacteria in the um, earwax itself. You just never know. Plus, it keeps my hands from um, my own personal private reason is to keep my hands from smelling like um, burning cotton. So when I start out, there's about a 15-20 minute time period where I will start to activate the sinuses, starting with over the head. Here is uh, sinus points here in the temple. And the idea is, and I'll go below the eyes to get the sinuses across the cheeks, the idea is to start stimulating the congestive flow downward towards the eustachian tube and out, um, out of the body, into the lymphatic system actually is where it goes. There's lymphatic drainage right here in the, in the neck by the clavicle. So my intention when I get started is to clear and activate the 
the all the sinus pathways. I'll also work up in here, up in the cranial, there's sinus points that you can stimulate that'll help start things flowing. So you're kind of wakening up that system so that it, and activating it so that it knows that something's coming. So I do that for, like I said, about 10 or 15 minutes, but just for purpose of demonstration. And then I will have the client either turn their head to the side or lay on their side. And I am not using the paper plate, but again, if you want to do this at home, this is the safest way because you want to protect the head um, from any burning flames. Another, another choice that I've used for the years okay. is also some, uh, some aluminum foil as well. So, so. so again, you could use at home, what I used for the, I didn't use a paper plate, I used aluminum foil, but either one works great just because there is the potential for, as you'll see in a moment, some uh, ash. Some dripping, yeah. Could come out, but very rarely does it ever do it until you get right down to the end and you pull it out, so. Yeah. Yeah. Because the, the idea with these candles, again, with the vacuum, is that whatever is only the smoke that's going to come out, and I'll show you what the indicator is. And you're not going to pull any of my gray matter out, are you? I don't, no, I don't, the gray I don't have matter a lot. stays. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> And this way. is what I have to put up with every day. <laughs> so we've got the face. Usually I would cover the eyes and the nose. Um, but I've got just the ear opening here. And just, you know, so I did this on my daughter at once. So this was a little bit of a, if you've got babies, um, you know, it's going to take a couple of you. And <laughs> do not, uh, you know, just sit, I would put them in a the lap. That's what we did and uh, just talk to them and I put the the foil down so you don't want them to see the fire obviously that can kind of alarm them <laughs> yeah, uh, so one reason of covering the mm -hmm. eyes yeah but again a baby might not like that as well so anyway we did it with our babies after we did it the first couple of times that like I say uh, when she was walking Larissa she, she she would come in waddling down the floor with the with the candle <laughs> I don't mean to interrupt however one of the important steps that you want to be aware of is the, the smoke coming down the candle. That tells you if it's coming down at the end that's going into the ear, the vacuum or the heat is already going downward, the, the cone shape. The fire is up at the top. And so when I insert it, I insert it. Now, again, you have to be careful with some of the store-bought ones that are smaller that you might, um, you don't want to insert it too much that you get a poke on the eardrum, but you want to make sure that you're not seeing any smoke escaping through the ear candle connection. That tells you, lets you know that you've got a solid vacuum. So, well, if you press too hard, you'll, uh, those, the, the smaller, cheaper the smaller candles ones. will yeah. actually bend and you'll mm -hmm. defeat the purpose. So, yeah, you won't have a clear path. How long does that burn question? for? So on these candles, and again, these are the deluxe ones. I've been doing this for about 18 years, and I wouldn't use any of the smaller ones. There's a lot of safety features, reasons that I wouldn't use it, but if that's all you can find in your health food store, just be aware. Um, so on these, because they're so much bigger around, and they create a lot more vacuum than the smaller ones, these indicators here, these lines that are on the candle, tell you when to look out for uh, the fact that there's enough wax in here that you need to clear the cone. Okay. So the other indicator that I watch out for when it gets close to this line is that if I see smoke going upwards um, around the flame, then I'll know that it's not, there's no vacuum anymore. Okay. So then that's when I would take the candle out. Um, so anyhow, the first step, the candling itself takes about 20 minutes for each candle. These are long burning candles, so you're getting a much uh, longer effect um, in the, you know, the vacuuming out. Um, and then while the client is, while the candle is burning and the client is resting, then again, I'll go in and do some um, head work and sinus work, kind of opening up and stimulating that area to relax and release. Most of the time, the clients will fall asleep. We don't have the bright lights on when we're doing the candling. Um, but this helps Now with the, with the smaller candles too, one of the things you will, and I will, 
I'm just starting to hear it now, but you can also tell the person doing this that you're going to feel uh, a little bit of heat in your ear, and you'll also probably hear a little crackling, crackling and that's all fine and normal and, and, and good, so don't worry about that. You're feeling heat? Just a little or bit. Or you just know that it, it does, yeah. So the candle in the smaller candles that you'll most health food stores will have, for those of you who are not in Boise and, don't, and cannot come to Living Waters, um, they're going to burn pretty fast, probably in about, uh, I don't know. Five, six, seven minutes. Yeah, it's pretty fast. It doesn't take too long at all. So you may want to do one or two candles per ear uh, if you need be. So. And if you do have a problem in one ear, um, but more of an issue in one over the other, I would still do both ears um, because we always want to assist the body in finding balance. Um, so even if you feel like one is worse than the other, uh, just be nice to the other one as well and do the clearing. So and I gotta tell you, nothing quite like having a professional ear candling done. So. So I'm just starting to see the smoke come up outside of the candle. That tells me that things are pretty well working here. So I'm going to take the candle out and I have a bowl of water here. Um, I'm going to blow it out over the bowl of water. I'll just cut the candle off if the flame is too great. And then just douse that in the bowl of water. Then, these ear candles, and most ear candles, I think, come with the cleaning stick. So this is a cleaning stick. You take the part that was in the ear, and you clean it out onto a napkin or a paper towel. Because again, there could be bacteria in here. Um, okay, so then I clean it out onto the paper towel. Um, and now we have another clear tube uh, ear candle that I will relight with the fire and, and put it back in his ear. Okay, so then we just go back into the ear. And again, I, I just kind of pull the back of the ear to open up that canal opening and then cover the ear up, make sh making sure that there's no uh, smoke escaping from the connection to the ear. And there we go again. I'm going to go for round two. And then typically you can see it burned. I took it out just right above the line because the smoke was coming out. So that's my first indication that I look for. But it typically always ends up the same timing as when I hit one of the, one of the marker lines. It would probably, one, be, probably be appropriate to play that song, uh, Burn, Baby Burn, right about now. I can sing. Yeah. Um, this red line here, though, is the last line you did not go. You d in these candles, you don't burn past that red line. So you, you want to stay, even in the smaller store-bought candles, you probably want to stay at least four inches off of the skin, off of the ear connection. Yeah, because you got to pull it out. And, and let me tell you, if you get it down too short, then you've got an issue uh, with pulling it out. That has been my And experience. then the client also will feel heat. <clears throat> so if they start to tell you that it's getting too hot, it could be that they already have some inflammation in the ear canal. Um, maybe they already have an ear infection. Because again, these are this is good for anything that might have gotten into the ear. Um, it's good for ear infections. It's good for ear wax buildup. Um, it's it improves and allows um, the ear, the hearing, the audible, uh, to improve. I had a client, an elderly client, and she didn't want to get fitted for hearing aids, so she got handling done once a month for a year and then she finally had to um, then she finally had to go and get the ear uh, hearing aids but before, when we started uh, the doctor the audiologist was already telling her that she needed to that she was losing her hearing but we kept it at bay for about a year and then she finally had to some of the things I've noticed too years ago I had a, a, a friend of mine came over and she was very dizzy and, and some I mean, you'd probably say vertigo issues, and uh, and she says, yeah, my, my ear's been bothering me as well. So, you know, two, the two kind of went hand in hand. So we did a quick ear candle on her, and uh, she stood up and stood up and went, wow, just that just that fast. So, 
Uh, it's pretty amazing how it pulls out that inflammation very quickly. The history of ear candling is that they used to use it way back probably the same time they started doing colon cleansing with the gourd and the reed. They used it with just rolled up paper um, as a purification. Um, let's see, the Native Americans um, and other indigenous cultures used it as a purification before they went into sacred ceremony or sacred ritual dance ceremony um, to purify any unclean thoughts or any, you know, whatever their, their understanding of all that was at the time. And then um, also they would do it as a purification process if they were going to form royalty. So there was your first puff of smoke coming up off the top. There comes some more. So this is telling me that it's clogged. And at the end, I'll show you what we actually got out of David's ear the first time and then the second time. And you can see why it starts to clog up. Use, I, I think you do too. So do we do a Q-tip in the yep, ear as well? Yep, yep, Am I free to get up? Nope. Oh, okay. Then I always have a Q-tip. And there's going to be some residual or residue uh, in the ear. You want to make sure you have enough lighting to see this. Hopefully somebody is assisting you if you're deciding to do this at home. Because you want to get out any, sometimes I've seen chunks that have been left in the ear. This is just basic oil you can use. This is actually part of my massage oil, but you can use any kind of olive oil or coconut can you see all the way through my head? Yeah. No. Are you laying on a green towel? I can see that. <laughs> okay, you're free to get up now if you all want. All right. Okay, what do we got here? So this was the first extraction out of okay. the candle after right. the first burn. You can see, and I don't know if the camera picks this up, but I can see um, different colors in the candling. So that tells me yeast, okay. candida. Mm -hmm. Um, because I know that you haven't been on antibiotics. Right. If I had somebody that had, uh, that, that came in and they had like pink um, and a brighter green, that tells me that they've been on certain meds, like okay. an antibiotic. And then this one here is mostly, you can see, is just the wax and then some powder before it. So it was the wax that uh, got things clogged up. Now a lot of people say, oh, well, that's just the wax um, going down, but... The wax of the two of the it's on yeah the wax is on the outside of the candle as you can see here right and that's not the same as the wax so that's that, ear wax so that's yeah that's, that's awesome that's wax and congestion so any of the harder matter that collects in the ear and then this is more the mucus that's pretty much so how often would you recommend for when they finally have pain or is this something that would be well, anytime Amazing. you start to feel pressure in your ear or you feel a loss of hearing of some kind or think your hearing sounds a little muffled, um, you know, then there's something going on. When I had the bug in my ear, I had my chiropractor look in there because I thought he needed to do a little uh, bone adjustment, but I was feeling sharp pain in my ear and the pain was the bug moving as it was being suffocated by the earwax which the body does as a self-defense mechanism. Our wax, our ear wax is, is a self-defense mechanism. So if there's something going wrong and you've got a lot of ear wax in your ear, your body is producing that for a reason. So yeah, anytime there's any kind of sharp pain or pressure or your hearing becomes changed, um, then I would, yeah, get a candling. Well, it's pretty inexpensive to do. What is a service here at Living Waters what does it cost for someone to come in here to do a, you say it's an hour session, you're doing, I know, it's a the massage. One hour session. It's very nice. So, yeah, I've just been charging $50. Okay. Um, these are really, uh, yeah, expensive candles. Yes. So part of that uh, cost goes for the candles. But I'm telling you, compared to what's out on the market. Yeah, these are very deluxe know, candles. As I say, you can see. probably go to a health food store and find the cheaper very thin candles, uh, probably, I don't know, three, four dollars, maybe five dollars. You get a pack of three for ten, or a pack of six for ten. Okay, and sets. these are in the 15-ish range. Yeah. Plus, so anyway, so complete difference. 
and these have the herbs on them, and these are the bead wax. You also have to be aware of what they're using for material right. to wrap the cone and what they're using for wax. A lot of them will you just use cheap paraffin wax, which is not healthy. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. It was a pleasure serving you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, for those of you who are uh, uh, watching this on, on YouTube, it's very easy to do. You can, you can do this in your home. So if you've got an emergency situation, like when I travel internationally, I take some candles with me uh, just in case because it's very inexpensive to, and it's a really easy thing to heal if you're in a, in a bind where you do get some vertigo, where you do get some ear pain and so forth. So hopefully you keep your colon healthy, you can avoid it all. But for those times, this time of year, when you are getting, uh, your immune system is down, you get a little cold, well then, you're probably gonna have some issues with your ears as well. So this is a very easy solution. And I hope you enjoyed this session from Living Waters. More on our, our, our Facebook page at uh, Living Waters Cleanse and also our website, livingwaterscleanse.com. Have a blessed day.